Rick and Morty have been a successful animated TV show that has released six seasons and is still ongoing to this day. However, many fans of the show agree Season 5 has released some of the best episodes yet, but have also agreed Season 5 contains some not-so-great episodes. So today we're going to look at both of those fan-favorite and not-so-fan-favorite moments from the season, ranking the episodes from worst to best. First up is Gotron Jerry as Rick Vangelion. This has to be one of the worst Rick and Morty episodes to date, and yet the creators and producers of the show thought it was a good idea to double down on it. The episode had a good beginning, but it was clear this episode was bound to doom. Gotron Jerry as Rick Vangelion showed the return of the giant incest baby who had played a prominent role in the second half of the episode. And aside from the giant incest baby, Gotron Jerry as Rick Vangelion was a parody of mecha anime like Voltron, showed a narrative similar to a Martin Scorsese gangster film. It showcases both the rise and the fall of the Smiths becoming mecha pilots and battling monsters from other dimensions, showing Summer enabling Rick's giant combining robots collection addiction, and was the episode that showed the family becoming the family. However, it was an episode that was more focused on parodying genre tropes and relied too much on that. It was like previous episodes that could parody pop culture and still be comedic. It was an episode that went way too far with its overall central joke and had bad comedic execution that was almost cringeworthy. This episode actually received the most vocal negative feedback overall by viewers. Next we have Mortyplicity. This episode of Season 5 is full of rapid-fire jokes and ideas that are practically thrown at fans that actually manage to work, even with such speed. The episode with viewers seeing different kinds of stories and settings for the Smith family first kicks off with another mystery to solve while also being in imminent danger, and soon explodes into the kind of madness you'd expect. When killer squids start hunting down the Smith family, Rick creates a decoy family in order to outsmart them. Only there's one problem. No one knows who is who. No one knows who is who. In this episode, although it had potential, there was nothing for fans to really connect when compared to other episodes in the season. And the plotline of the various types of Smith families doesn't last long, because their deaths in the episode come pretty quickly. It's an episode that could have dragged the mystery out, or even let it continue into the following episode. But the producers decided to just put it all into one episode. This episode has better jokes than even the worst episodes, but the comedy doesn't make up for the plot in this case. And now for a Rick Convenient Mort. This was an episode split into two halves, one having a great plot with Morty and a possibly budding romance, and a weak B-plot with Rick and Summer. This episode shows Morty fall in love with an environmental superhero Planetina, voiced by actress Allison Brie, and they end up being in a serious relationship. In the B-plot of this episode, meanwhile, Rick and Summer go on an apocalyptic party tour by going to three planets that are about to be destroyed. In this episode, although the show is mostly comedic, has more emotional notes because Morty falls in love and, like in real life, had the emotional highs and lows of being in love that a teenager would experience. Bree's character in the show quickly progressed into a more dark character. And although Planetina and Morty's breakup was sad for viewers, Bree excelled in voicing her role. The scene when the song Flowers played was one of the high points of the episode. It showed the highs of Morty and Planetina's budding relationship before Planetina shows her dark side by taking more extreme action to save the environment. The B-plot with Rick, however, was one note joke with not an intense of a plot. In this B-plot of the episode, Rick and Summer's hectic partying gets derailed after Rick brings in an alien buddy. Then in the episode, the third apocalypse party gave viewers warning signs of things to come because it had a crude incest joke. Up next we have Forgetting Sarek Morchel. This was a stronger episode of Season 5, and was an episode with more balance and consistency. In this episode, after Morty used a portal gun unauthorized, Rick replaces Morty with two crows. Rick wanted to show how dispensable Morty was to him, but he ended up getting too close with the crows. And so, this attempt at proving a point backfired not for Rick at the time, but for Morty, a man who had a portal on his thigh and had been locked into a psychiatric facility. The episode, Forgetting Sark Morchel, explored more of Rick and Morty's relationship, and the focus on it made the episode more potent than other episodes. The episode had an apparent theme, and it was another character-driven episode. This is also clear because in the episode, Morty finds out Nick had been used by Rick, but later on there was an explanation for why Rick had cut Nick loose. Morty just didn't know it at the time. The episode did have a strong end in which Morty was able to stand up to Nick. Then the episode showed how sadly Rick and Morty were willing to part ways. However, this didn't last long, and the ending was undercut when they reteamed again in the following episode. Now for Mort Dinner Rick Andre. The fifth season got a good kickstart. Although there wasn't any ties to season 4's finale, and the elements of that finale weren't spoken about until much later in season 5, so it does get knocked for that, but it's one of the stronger standalone episodes of the series as a whole. It got everything you want from a solid Rick and Morty episode. It takes the science fiction premise of the show to an exaggerated conclusion, with smaller hints of canonical content and the official introduction of Rick's rival, Evil Rick, a wacky new character with seed rival, and it also showcased Morty acting like a selfish teen with ironic and comedic consequences. In this episode, almost every character is involved. Unfortunately, the premiere episode is hindered by the fact it's a premiere at all. It didn't really deliver on all of the emotional stakes it could have, but later on, the other episodes in Season 5, especially the finale, made up for that. The episode was a good kickstart for Season 5, and was about as good as a premiere episode can get. Up next is Rick Mirai Jack. Rick Mirai 
Jack was the season finale of season 5 of Rick and Morty. It started off with a strong joke with a spot-on parody of anime shows, and all of its content involving 40-year-old Morty and his de-aging was comedic. There was a montage that showed what Rick did when he was trying to hunt for a rogue Rick, and then became more dejected as time went on. With the de-aging aspect of it, this episode showed Rick and Morty having to go to the Citadel for the first time since the events in the episode of The Rick Shank Redemption. In this episode, Rick takes Morty to the Citadel so he could be de-aged back to his real age. However, their plans are foiled and they get captured by evil Morty, who then reveals his plans to the two. This episode was a game changer and answered a lot of unanswered questions for fans. In this episode, evil Morty revealed the dark secret of the Citadel where the Ricks had closed themselves from the rest of the multiverse. And it's also revealed that this is where they engineered an endless supply of Mortys. Evil Morty had aimed to break this system and destroy the Citadel. And many could argue this is the biggest cliffhanger that the series has had so far. And finally, we have Ricternal Friendshine of the Spotless Mort. This one is the eighth episode of the season, Ricternal Friendshine of the Spotless Mort, and it's number one on the list. Rick tries to use his alone time to try and bring his friend, the bird person, back to life after the Smith family goes away for a short break. However, to do this, Rick has to go into the bird person's mind so his friend can face his trauma, and this also forces Rick to face some of his own. The title, Ricternal Friendshine of the Spotless Mort, is actually a reference to the 2004 film, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And just like that film, this episode explored the mindscape and its relationship between two characters. Some may argue this is one of the most dramatic episodes in the entire series. While Rick and Morty is mostly humorous and fun, this showed that the show could do more intense and dramatic plot lines if they wanted to, because the execution of that plot line was a success. Fans also loved this episode because it not only showed more of Rick's backstory, but gave viewers shocking reveals by Evil Morty that was followed up on in the season finale. So what did you think of the video? What's your least favorite Rick and Morty episode? What's your favorite Rick and Morty episode? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe.